study. We performed the shift ang in a study because recently the results of the Signify trial were published. Signify was a 19,000 patient trial in, in, in subjects with chronic stable coronary artery disease, and it was negative. Ivabradine had no benefit for those patients in terms of survival or acute myocardial infarction frequency, but among the patients with angina, there was a negative result. That is, the uh, uh, survival or new myocardial infarction was more frequent in people who were given ivabudine than people given placebo. Well, that's a problem because <clears throat> two-thirds of the patients with heart failure have coronary disease and one-third have active or history of angina. And if giving ivabudine to patients with angina is not good, then what about the heart failure patients in whom we think the drug is very beneficial? So to determine whether there was a difference, a disparity in results between people with heart failure from the shift trial and people who had no heart failure and normal heart function from the Signify trial, we went back and post hoc did an analysis of the patients in shift who had entered the study with angina. And that was about a third of the patients, 30%. Uh, and uh, so that was the reason we did it. And we were very happy to find that the results of the shift angina population was the same as the total shift population and very different from the signified population, which itself is very different from the shift population. So that's why we did it. Ibabradine is a, um, an F-channel blocker. The F-channel was discovered in 1979, so it's a latecomer to the channels. Uh, it was discovered in 1979, and it was obviously a potential target for treatment of patients with angina for whom heart rate slowing is very important, and potentially for heart failure for similar reasons. So there was, there was good reason to suspect that if, if you slowed the heart rate in people with chronic systolic heart failure, their hearts would work better, and they do. You know, we've shown that in the ECHO sub-study of SHIFT. Uh, so there was good uh, experimental and pathophysiological evidence that um, slowing heart rate would be good for heart failure. There was certainly good evidence that it would be good for people with angina. What was lacking was uh, information about the effect of heart rate slowing in patients with chronic stable coronary disease. It was assumed that beta blockers would be good for that because beta blockers had been tested in people with acute MI in the acute phase and they did better subsequently. But that's not the same thing as chronic stable coronary disease. Nobody ever tested uh, anti-anginal drugs for chronic stable coronary disease ever, ever, until we did uh, Beautiful and then Signify. The primary findings in SHIFT were that uh, reducing heart rate with Ivabradine uh, improved the primary outcome of the trial, which was uh, uh, cardiovascular mortality or uh, heart, uh, hospitalizations for worsening heart failure. Uh, that result was driven primarily by the dramatic reduction in hospitalizations for worsening heart failure. There was a reduction in cardiovascular mortality, but it wasn't statistically significant in the trial the way it was designed. Um, subsequent post hoc analysis uh, demonstrated, uh, demonstrated a significant reduction in cardiovascular mortality among the people whose heart rate was at least 75 when they got Ivabradine. But the trial was designed for greater than 70. And there, there's a tendency towards reduction in mortality, but it's not statistically significant. However, so that, those were the primary findings of SHIFT. Uh, but the impact of those findings is very important because uh, the largest segment of the cost of taking care of people with heart failure is the cost of hospitalization. It accounts for two-thirds of the, of the expenditures on heart failure patients. So reducing hospitalizations could have a dramatic impact on the amount we as a society are spending or individual patients are spending on their care. Uh, and we do reduce 
heart failure hospitalizations. And it's not just the first hospitalization, which was assessed in shift. It's all hospitalizations over the course of several years. We published that in 2012. Uh, there's a 25% reduction in hospitalizations for heart failure across the full two and a half year average follow-up time or four year maximum follow-up time. Uh, and it's true not only for the first hospitalization, but for the second hospitalization, the third hospitalization. So there's a big economic benefit to treating with the modality that will reduce hospitalizations. Uh, number one take home message would be if you have a patient whose heart rate is greater than 70 and in heart failure uh, and on and in sinus rhythm with a heart rate greater than 70 and on standard guideline based therapy you should treat them with ibabradine because they'll benefit from it. Uh, the second important point that needs to be made to clinicians is that that's true whether they have it coronary disease is the cause of their heart failure, whether they have angina with their coronary disease or they don't have angina with their coronary disease. The results of studies in other populations aren't relevant. In heart failure, it's, it's good to slow the heart rate.